Caitlin Gray and today I will be taking you guys through my 2021 bullet journal setup. This is a mammoth of a video so I'm just going to jump right into it and take you guys into the first thing I'm doing which is the inner flyleaf of my journal. I'm pulling out all the stops for this journal while still keeping it very minimal and simple but trying something new and going for this really fun flourish design that you can see me doing here. I started by doing this on the flyleaf because I wanted to make this gray color more appealing to me and I wanted to kind of start my journal off with something that really made me happy and I really liked and kind of set the tone, the mood, the vibe for the entire year. So that is what I'm doing. I'm going in with this white Uni Posca paint pen. It's in a bit of a thicker tip, very similar to the paint pens I used when I worked at Starbucks actually, wild, anyway. I'm going in and drawing all these flourishes. A couple things I figured out when I was drawing these is that with the paint pen, when you pick up the pen and put it down, it creates this pool of paint. I was gonna say ink there, but it's paint. So I try to kind of avoid having paint pooling everywhere by not lifting up my pen when I didn't really need to. So what I made sure to do was I lifted up the pen when I started the flourish, when I stopped the flourish, and if I needed to take a break, I would do it where two lines would cross over since it wasn't as noticeable. I'm carrying this flourish design onto the actual pages of my journal by inverting the color scheme and going in with a warm gray marker. This one is from the brand Faber-Castell and it's a brush tip. And to give it a bit of depth and a really fun sketchy look, I'm going over all the flourishes twice so that, you know, we're not looking for something perfect, we're just going for that fun sketchy vibe, so no need to stress over a flourish not looking right. If you go over it again, usually it kind of hides the mistake, which is awesome. So after doing a couple of those flourishes on that cover page, I'm going into the back of my journal and setting up my year at a glance spread. Now I'm actually doing this on tracing paper because I do not want to set up this calendar for the rest of the year ever again. I find that making the year at a glance calendar is important for me and it is something that's really important for my journal to function, but it's a lot of time that goes into drawing the little numbers. And I want to try to figure out a way to avoid doing it more than once because I usually go through more than one journal a year. So tracing paper was my solution. My plan for this is to make the year at a glance calendar on this little square of tracing paper. I'll washi tape it into the back of my journal for easy reference. And then when I move into a new journal, all I have to do is pick up the washi tape with my year at a glance and move it into the new one. And I will be cackling to myself because I won't have to draw this horrible calendar again. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry. I just, I can't, I can't deal with tedious work. It's just something that I really don't like. So I try to avoid it as much as possible. I just finished this calendar off by lettering the title 2021, drawing a nice little border so that it has a little bit of a boundary. And then I took this white washi tape, cut it in half so it's a little skinnier, and then I taped it right into the back of my journal. I figured this spot in the back would be a good place to put it because it would be easy to reference since my key is actually going in the spot in the front. I did the key off camera since it's a very similar process to the year to glance. It's just on the tracing paper, throw a lettered title, throw in a border, and you're good. This is my key in a very basic form. I didn't include all the symbols because I know my key at this point, so I just wanted something that was good enough to get the idea across. Next, I'm moving into the actual, I guess, spreads of my journal, and I'm starting off by making an index. An index is one of the cornerstone basic spreads of the original bullet journal method, and it's essentially a spot where you can write down the page numbers of all of the spreads you make in your journal. I use this spread a lot, so I am allotting four pages for it, and I'm keeping the design really simple since I want the bulk of this spread to have just a lot of room for me to write down all of the notes that I want to reference later throughout my journal. Moving on to another traditional spread from the bullet journal method, this is my future log. The way I like to design my future log is a bit different than how the original method designs it, and that's because I find as a student, the original future log just didn't really work well for me because I don't tend to have the same amount of events happening every month, 
So having the same amount of space for each month just didn't really work well for me. So instead, I prefer to set up an Alistair method style future log since this type of log uses columns instead of sections for months. So you don't have to worry about running out of space in certain months and then having no idea where to put those dates when you have new ones to add, but you have no room. So to set up this style spread, I'm first starting by taking the first, I think, third of the page and making my little title section with a bunch of flourishes and writing the word future log so I know what the spread is. And then I'm carrying the flourish design onto the next two pages because I need four pages worth of room to get all of my dates down. I like to record events, birthdays, as well as due dates for my grad school in here. I just find that it works really well for my brain and having everything jumbled together doesn't really bother me. One tip I wanted to mention, I know I need four pages based on experimentation over the years, but if you're just starting bullet journaling and wondering how many pages to give yourself, I'd recommend looking at this or last year's calendar and looking at how many dates you had going on and then using that number to estimate how many pages you'll need. Okay, so now I'm going in making the Alistair method part of this spread. If you've never heard of the Alistair method, I have a whole video on it explaining it, so I definitely recommend checking that out if you've never heard of it and want to learn more, but that is pretty much all I'm doing for this spread. Now we are departing from the more traditional bullet journal spreads and moving into customized collections that I make based on my own needs for my journal. I would recommend stopping here if you're a beginner to bullet journaling and maybe just setting up the spreads recommended in the original video, which I'll link below. Or if you want to set up some customized spreads but don't know where to begin, usually my rule of thumb for setting up custom spreads is I like to only include spreads at the beginning in my yearly setup that I know I either reference a lot, use a lot, or I'm 90% sure that I'll use. I like to keep the amount of spreads I have to make as small and concise as possible, so I'm only setting up what I really, really need. Just like this grid guide. This guy is a spread that I've used for a couple of years now, but this year I wanted to make it a little more condensed and only include the measurements for the page that I felt I needed and I referenced a lot. So I am marking down the full half, third, and quarter measurements of the page lengthwise and widthwise, and I'm indicating these measurements through the number of boxes in my journal. One thing I want to mention here is my journal is a B6 size, so these grid spaces might not be the same for you depending on the size of your own journal, so make sure to measure your own journal accordingly so you get the correct measurements. Something I also did here when I was making the title in the gray marker was I made sure to only go over the lettering on the downstrokes twice. This created a really fun ombre effect that I think looks really cool, so if you're recreating this spread, maybe give that a try and see how you like it. On the other side of the page, I'm setting up a really simple goal spread for the year. I'm going in with a couple simple flourishes just to add a little bit of fun and decoration. And then I wrote the title goals in a bit of cursive. And then I'm going in with a piece of tracing paper and marking out the square I'm going to washi tape in and write my goals on top of. I decided to make this square smaller because I don't want to have a ton of yearly goals. I just want to write three or five really big important ones. And I really like how I did this on tracing paper because then if I need to change my goals or rewrite them, I can just remove the paper, make a new square, and then tape it in. So there's no pressure to kind of write down the goals and then they're set in stone and these are your goals forever for the rest of the year because I know that aspect of commitment can really intimidate me sometimes, so this is a really good solution to ease myself into that. Initially, I added black washi tape to secure this piece of paper, but I later went in and I changed it to white washi tape. This is just because I'm going for a really muted and soft color palette, but feel free to use whatever color washi tape you want and what you like the best.
this next spread I've had in a couple journals now, and this is my project log. This is a spot where I like to write down all of the yearly projects I want to work on. This isn't a spot where I necessarily plan out the project details, more of a place for me to record all of the projects I'm doing or want to do so I can keep track of the things that I want to work on and have a spot to note my progress. In order to make this spread, I'm making a really simple table and I'm drawing the vertical line three squares in from the left so I have three boxes where I can add three check marks next to my project, and these will be when I start the project, when the project is in progress, and when I've finished the project. Now we are moving on to the two trackers that I have in my yearly setup, and those are my reading tracker and my plant watering tracker. I kept my reading tracker really simple and condensed this year because I didn't want to create a lot of space for it because I usually don't read a ton of books. So I'm just doing an Alistair method checklist for the first six months of the year since I have a feeling this journal will fill up around that time. On the right side of the page, I'm making my plant tracker. This is a spot where I like to write down when I've watered my plants and is paramount to the survival of them. <laughs> I actually have a new plant this year, which I'm writing in my tracker as well, Galandriel. I actually name all of my plants after characters in Lord of the Rings, so that is something fun that I really like to do. And I'm connecting these spreads with a flourish down the middle, but keeping it really small so that most of the spread is reserved for the information that I have to write down because that is kind of the important part when it comes to plant watering, I find. For my plant watering, the way I like to track it is I like to do a circle and fill it in each time I water my plant, and then directly underneath I write the date that the watering occurred. So that's why I'm drawing all these circles and leaving one space in between each row so I can note down the date I water each plant. Now I am moving on to the last spread of this yearly setup, and this is a really fun spread. It's not really the most serious, and it's not something that will be for everyone, so I recommend instead of this spread, if it doesn't suit you, do something else that either is fun for you or something that you really need in your journal. But for me, I really want to make this fun spread because I'm trying to let go a little more this year in my journal and have a little more fun because I can be overly serious sometimes. So this spread is going to be a year in paintings. Recently this year I got into gouache painting because of the quarantine pandemic scenario and I've been really enjoying it and wanted to have a spot in this journal where I could put all of the little pictures of my paintings in one spot so it's kind of like a little gallery of the paintings from the entire year, kind of similar to the gallery of maps in the Vatican, if you guys have ever been there. That's kind of the vibe I was going for, but with less gold, because this is a gray theme, right? <laughs> anyway, what I'm doing here is I'm drawing all my flourishes in gray across the entire page, and then I'm going in with tracing paper, and I'm going to be using these as the little frames for my paintings. Now, <laughs> this spread! Um, was a bit of a struggle because I started by gluing down the tracing paper and I didn't realize it was gonna make my page curl so much. But after putting down three squares, I just had a feeling that this just was not gonna work. So I had to rip the uh, tracing paper off the page, which actually wasn't stressful at the time. Although now looking back on it, I'm really happy that I didn't rip a hole in my page. Um, but you know, you gotta pivot and work with uh, whatever happens. You gotta work with the circumstances. So I'm ripping off the paper and this is where I'm getting a little creative and trying to figure out a solution to this problem. I ultimately decided to go in with the tracing paper, but instead of gluing it down, I'm sticking it down with some washi tape. I started with this black washi tape and then I went back in with the white just because I found that I just really love the look of the white and the kind of transparent quality that it brings. And then finally, I realized there was something missing, but I didn't know what. And then I realized that what was missing was a nice little border. So I went in with my brush pen and drew a nice thin border around each frame. And then inside each of these borders, I'll paste in the photos for my paintings. And let me just say, I was really happy when I figured this out as you can hear. Ah, yes. 
But that border was ultimately the final touch that I decided to add for the spread, so I'm going ahead and adding that to all of the little parchment paper squares in my journal, and I'm repeating this entire design on two more pages, so this would be six pages total, so that I have 12 spaces for 12 paintings, since it's a goal for me this year to paint at least one painting a month. Alright, and now that we have made it over the hill, which was the struggle of that painting spread, we are now at the end of my 2021 bullet journal setup. This setup had a lot of spreads. I showed you guys how I made my key, my year to glance, my index, my future log, my project log, my grid spacing guide, goal sheet, my plant tracker, as well as my reading tracker, and my year in paintings. How could we forget that one? <laughs> and it was a really fun setup. I really like this new style that I'm kind of going for in my journal. It's really simple and easy to do, but I really love how it's modern and elegant and just a direct expression of my creativity and doesn't allow me to overthink, which is really good. So that was my setup. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it or were at least mildly entertained. Don't forget, if you want to recreate this spread, tag me on Instagram and check out the supply list below so that you know what the heck you're doing. And besides that, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye everyone! Yes! We did it! We did it!